Onigashimasu. Welcome back to the Gojiru Karate Center. Comment a couple of weeks ago, if kakie is the Ju component of Gojiru, uh, the Ude Tanden or Koketai is the Go component. And this is the physical conditioning that one would undergo to develop a very, very strong body. However, before you engage in any of this, you need to make sure that you are fit and healthy enough to actually do these exercises. If you have got a blood disorder, you're on blood thinners, you um, are on some kind of medication that is going to result in you getting bruises very easily and these bruises can be detrimental, then this is not for you. And very simple, if we look at our dojo-kun, it says we need to take care of our health and we need to train according to our physical strength. So. If you cannot do this, it is also okay if you have a sound medical reason. All right, obviously, if you're worried about this or concerned about this, take it up with the sensei first beforehand. The other thing is your lifestyle. If you are in the public eye, you may be the front of house of a business, etc., and you are walking around with bruises everywhere it might not bode well in your everyday life and in your life outside of the dojo. So please consider these things before jumping head first into body and arm and physical conditioning that is somewhat more painful and that will leave you bruised and with different colored arms as you get into it. If you, however, are young and energetic and you don't care about these things and you want to be a good, solid karateka, you need to start slow and build it up. That's it. Let's get on with it. Hi, Sensei Brian. Onigashimasu. Okay, so we're going to start with the most basic idea, which would be this block. Uh, I grew up and we just called this block Ude Uke. And so we called a lot of this stuff in our dojo just Ude Tanden. All right, this and this, all right? And so very simple, just chopping away into each other's arms. And there's nothing fancy about it. You would just do lots and lots of it. So we can do the exact same thing with the lower version. Okay, we can do the idea of a chest block against one another. And then obviously get under eye. Okay, so this gives you a basic idea of what you would do. And uh, it is volume. There are a couple of other ways of considering this kind of conditioning. So we didn't cover face block because it's kind of hard to do face blocks against each other unless you're hitting this way. Okay, but it's limited. So the other way of doing this, which is a little bit neater and tidier and touches in with your basics, is every time your partner is punching and you are blocking, you are doing the conditioning on the arms at the same time. So if you do hundreds and hundreds of partner drills with the partner continuously and you're really working hard on each other's arms, you're going to find your arms are going to be a little bit tender afterwards. So if Brian is punching Jordan, now for this really to work, Brian needs to make sure that when he punches for my face, he creates a resistance downward for me to block up against. Same with Chudan. Down. You want to aim for the center. I have to get it out. And for Gedan, same thing. If we're hitting Gedan, making sure that we are getting a hard, strong block. The more you practice it, the more you start feeling, hold on, this is starting to work a little bit. 
then obviously you can have fun. And I think if you have a look, I think I've covered about six drills there, but they get boring. So I like to build on them. So if we go back to the first set of drills and we do one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, easy. Cross, down, back. Cross, down, back. Last night, we worked on something a little different. We did get umber eye. Just stomach receiving technique or block, reaping block, whatever you want to call it. So we started with one, other hand, two, three. Now this hand, one, two, three. Uh, okay, and just building on that idea to get this right. And it actually worked out quite well. So it's the idea of how can I make my blocks work a little bit better for me? How do I condition my arms? And the more I do it, the more comfortable I get with it. A, I become desensitized to the pain. I don't become oblivious to the pain. I, my, my, my ability to deal with it gets better. Um, B, I develop harder, stronger bones. And this is a contentious issue. There are people who will say, hold on, this doesn't make harder bones. It just leaves you with lots of bruised uh, soft tissue. But I think if you take this combined with Chishi and Ishisashi and Kongo Ken and all the load bearing exercises, you do develop stronger, more dense bone structure as well as stronger connective tissue across the joints. And that's why it's so important to combine all of these things. They're all part of a greater whole. You can't do uh, two of them and leave out the other, let's call it seven. You need to try and put everything into your training, even if it is in small, moderate, small doses. And that will help you develop a stronger body and stronger mind. We've done all of these things. The other part of this training is physically on the body. So first exercise and go Brian. So you play with the ideas. I can do straight punches. I can do hooks. I can do combinations. And you just work on it. What is often a very interesting exercise to do is um, I do, you do, and you've got to copy. So if I go one, two, three, okay, then And so you, you build and you're conditioning, you're hitting the abdominal muscles, the center, as well as the sides. So this is another part of our training. The next thing, the one that everybody hates because this is just so sore for most of us. The guys out there doing koi cushion or with the koi cushion root, it's your bread and butter, okay? So Brian, let's go stand and just... So I had a, an instructor who was very antagonistic towards this particular exercise. Let's just change so people can see. And his logic was the best part of Gojuru Karate was not to be there. And that if you just train this with the idea that you can walk through everything, at some point somebody's going to kick you that hard that your knee's going to go. And so I think there is merit in that argument. I think there is this idea that you can do damage, so you have to be moderate. But the other thing is that you have to combine it with the idea, this is a last resort, so that if I do get hit, I don't just simply go down. Changing the exercise. Practice the inside as well. Let's change legs, Brian. As the outside. And again, it gets boring, so you practice one, two, go Brian, outside, inside, 
And okay, and so you start to condition. Slightly more advanced way of doing this, um, and this is the brutal one, is to get used to the idea of the up down into the thigh. All right, so. Oh, that was it, Brian. There we go. Hey. All right, and so you condition the legs. Shin conditioning. I don't suggest doing lots of shin conditioning straight up by kicking each other in the shins because as strong as the bones may be, um, there, there's enough empirical evidence. Just watch uh, how many guys have broken their legs in fights um, for shins to get damaged. So the first place you start shin conditioning is actually a punch bag. And all you're gonna do is use the, the shin into the bottom, the heavy part of the bag. Okay, I would definitely start by hitting the bag. The next thing, um, a rolling pin is another good way to start by taking a rolling pin and rolling down the shin because it's really, really sore. And finally, maybe you'll take a balloon whisk, a metal balloon whisk, or if you can get a Chinese whisk, um, a bamboo Chinese whisk, that's really good, and you hit. So what I have is a very large um, balloon whisk that I use in the kitchen when I'm cooking for the family, and from time to time, I use that to whack my arms and legs. But what we will do is show you the basis of shin conditioning. All right, hey Brian, let's go. All right, so we stand closer together. It's gonna be a light tapping. Just a light tap. You can hit with your shin more, Brian. Concentrate on hitting with your shin. It's shin on shin. Okay, go Brian. There we go. It doesn't have to be hard and brutal. Just start with the light tap. All right. If that's a little bit heavy, um, if we, we could take something else, which is like kakie for shins and push, Brian. We can just lots and lots of this kind of exercise. And this will help make the shins a little bit stronger. Thereafter, just step to the side. And again, you want to make good connection with shin bone. And it's just a gentle swing. All right, all right. if you want to practice the karate part of it, it is kick, pull. And you start working on shin kick plus ashibarai combined. And that's a little bit more advanced. But the idea of little kick, little kick, Little kick. You okay, Brian? I... Little kick. Little kick, okay? All right, Brian, you want to have a go? You can step to that side, kick into the shin. And so you, you stand and you take the kicks. I have got a black belt in my dojo who, who likes to uh, kick the makiwara with his shin, the wooden part of the makiwara, and He's, it's taken a long time. It started with him gently tapping the makiwara with his shin, um, and now he kicks the makiwara a little bit. It's just a light kick, um, but his shins are incredibly hard. He's a huge man. He's over six foot, over 100 kilos, and you know if he kicks you, you know you've been kicked. Ude tanden can be done a little bit differently. Solo training, solo training, would be something like this. This is, uh, we call it a PNC, after Sensei Brown PNC. This is one of the chishis that came out of his uh, dojo. He had a couple of them. They're uh, about 10 kilos of cement at the bottom. And this is roofing timber, what would have been a 38 by 38. I'm just trying to do the math in my head, which I think is a one and a half inch by one and a half inch piece of roofing timber. Um, that has just been gently rounded off. And simply practicing kicking. Just, ah, 
bad kick, yeah? Kick, kick, kick. A little bit too soft. And just kicking the shaft. Don't kick too hard, otherwise it falls over, okay? But the idea is to tap kick with the shin onto the uh, shaft of the chishi. And that way you've got something that's a little bit better for the shins and you can work on it. Other great ideas I've seen on YouTube is to use tires. And tires are fantastic for conditioning because they're much harder than a bag and you can have a tire and you can kick into the tire and work. Or you can take um, the punch bag piece off of a uh, freestanding punch bag and just have the tire with the steel pipe and then kick that. Um, but I haven't seen too many people laying into the pipe portion of the Jindokan freestanding punch bag. Obviously the last piece would be a training rock or training stone for your hands and your fingers. Um, this is just like a little sandbag and you can The best person to watch doing this because he's just been doing it for so long and his hands are massively calloused since Emorio Higuana. The downside of that is do you wish to walk around in your everyday life with massively calloused tops of your hands, knuckles, etc.? Will it fit in with your everyday life? For Higuana Sensei, I'm sure that is okay, it's part of his identity. But I work with my hands and if I damage my hands massively, I cannot hold tools that allow me to earn an extra income. And so I have to treat some of those exercises with a certain amount of respect, but I also need to understand that I, I don't need to do that all the time. The last thing I need is to have swollen and bruised hands while I'm trying to do my job. And I think it, the, the same thing applies if you drive a keyboard or a mouse and suddenly you cannot punch the keys and cannot do the work because your fingers and your hands are swollen, bruised or battered. This can be problematic. So at all times, please remember to take care of your health and train according to what your lifestyle dictates. The young guys who uh, really are into becoming, trying to become hardcore martial artists, obviously you can take this a little bit further and you can work on it because it's not affecting your ability to earn an income if you're in that age group where you're being supported by somebody else. All right, so this is a little sandbag and you can do that. Otherwise, get a big rock or um, a brick. When I was a kid growing up in the dojo, we each had a brick with our name written on it and you used to practice hitting hammer fist and hurricane and little punches uh, to make your hands hard. We were a little bit crazy, I must admit. Okay, a thin, this is a thin one. I've got one that's thicker. And so the self ude tanden kind of you know please I don't belong to Opus Day. Um, I am bad reference for everybody who's a Dan Brown fan. But um, the idea And that's where you can make your, your body nice, strong, hard, and you need a really well-made well whisk, by the way. If your whisk is a little bit flimsy, you know, if it's just the wire one that's spiraled together at the bottom, you might break one of those. I have, so, oops, sorry, Mom. That's what happened to your balloon whisk. I think that is going to be our training for this morning. Hi, Brian with the balloon whisk. Let's see how, 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 how good your shins are, Brian. All right, watch his face. Oh. How does it feel, Brian? Mm, not terrible, but... All right, 
The idea is hit on both facets of the front of the tibia bone. The tibia bone is kind of triangular in shape and you want to condition both facets of that. And the front edge, the leading edge, is the piece that gets really hard. That's also the piece that gets broken and ends up with lots of divots and kinks and things in it. You know a person's done a lot of shin conditioning when you take your finger and you run it down their shin and it kind of feels like mountains and valleys and you know what they've been up to. All right, that is it for this morning. Come around, let's take a bow. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. Thank you very much for watching another video from the Kojuru Karate Center. A little bit more of the, the hard, extreme stuff today. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and have an awesome week, everybody. Sayonara. <laughs>